Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jingjing from Intel. I'm the developer of the former driver team on the Intel Nix. So to, my topic today is about the uh, flow application on Intel X17 and X17. I think um, you guys maybe know this mix. So uh, this is the agenda. First, let me go through the background. Why we need the DBDK co work with the kernel step. And next, uh, let's look into uh, how, what we did for the flow application on Intel Nix. And the next is the summary. Uh, kernel, now as we know that the kernel can process about uh, around uh, uh, 1 million packets per second of one core. So um, I did a simple comparison between kernel bridge and the DBDK L2 forward uh, samples. Uh, we can find that DBDK L2 forward can achieve dozen times than kernel bridge and uh, um, both of them are just uh, occupied one core. And uh, even that kernel bridge is not uh, that good on scaling up, even we um, bring much cores to it. And I also did a test on that. I add uh, eight cores uh, for the kernel bridge um, processing. Uh, it's just uh, scaling up about three to four times compared with one core. So, uh, as we know that DBDK is well known um, to be built to build high performance data um, plan uh, forwarding um, workload. And um, but uh, uh, how about the uh, how about the control plan? Uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, real world packet processing uh, real, uh, uh, depends on the kernel schedule, kernel kernel, and uh, it's a large step a lot. So um, to combine the advantage of both, we think uh, we need co um, maybe DBDK co work with uh, kernel and interworking with kernel. Uh, there is two ways to interworking with kernel. The first one is exception paths such as tab, KNI, F packet. I think uh, you guys already um, involved a lot in the community discussing. Uh, and I, uh, in my opinion, uh, all these solutions just uh, has the same con concept is that DPDK is only owning the uh, device and pulling from physical device and then um, directors uh, some packet, some maybe control plan packet to the kernel space. Uh, another way is that we can just uh, separate the traffic just on the NICs. So we call that uh, flow bifurcation. Uh, this page shows the idea on how we achieved the, the uh, how we the thought on bifurcation. So we use the NIC of load features to um, achieve the queue slip. And the, the queue in green is hold, for example, the queue in green is uh, handled by um, kernel driver and, uh, and the queue in purple is handled by DBDK. Uh, you know that how how we can how can we achieve that? Uh, you know that DBDK um, polling drivers are handling the M buffer and the M4 um, memory, um, but the kernel driver is handling maybe allocated by kernel space the DMA. <coughs> so, uh, so let's go to next. So the flow bifurcation is SIV best and uh, we use the hardware packet classification. Uh, in Intel Nanetic Nix, we're using flow director. And in U, uh, Intel X710 and X710, we use the one filter called cloud filter. So uh, look to the um, page on the right. You can see that DBDK is handling the VF and while the uh, kernel is handling the PF. So both PF and VF can have few queues. So uh, the key things here is about the filterings. 
uh, what the pin, uh, what the filterings can be used to direct a packet to VF or direct a packet to PF. Let's let's look all the packet classification filters um, in photo in X710 and X710. So uh, we can uh, we can consider all the filters to two types. One is to VSI, and one another is to Q. So. Uh, 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 this, which one will benefit to our flow um, bifurcation? I choose. We choose the uh, first one to VSI. It is called internal switch filters uh, in the red wall over. Yeah, uh, VSI. Uh, if you're familiar with X710 and XL710 architecture, you will know that. Uh, um, for VSI, we have physical function type and a VF function type. So, uh, and all these uh, types of, uh, all the types of the VSIs need to connect to a virtual embedded bridge. Of uh, branch, of course, is Mac uh, is the forwarding packet like by comparing Mac and Mac VLAN. But X710 extended such um, bridge to support more kind of filtering. We call that cloud VB. So all the v, uh, in the VB three priority filterings are uh, container. Uh, the first one, the first priority is control <coughs> control filtering. The control filtering is filtering by Mac and Mac is a type. It is used to filter like uh, control frame just in the media layer. And the priority two filters is called cloud filter. It is more flexible. It can be used to filtering tunnel packet and using. Um, filtering by IP packet. And the last one is the latency one, traditional one by um, forwarding packet by Mac and Mac VLAN. So, uh, you know that uh, um, from the picture, obviously that we know that uh, um, PF is handling by kernel driver. So how, how can we program the filterings? So ETH2 is default one, default one. Uh, previously, I thought the driver uh, configure such rules, um, uh, such rules in kernel driver is the flow director typically. But in uh, I thought the flow director is just uh, working on scope. Obviously, cannot direct packet to Vista. So we need to extend this ETH command to support uh, <coughs> uh, to to support uh, our cloud filters. So, uh, fortunately, we have a, we have a arguments called user defined. So, we use the user defined. Uh, uh, the user defined can contain some information like uh, uh, which VF are you going to, and which uh, which uh, uh, which VI are you specified, and uh, such like that. So this is the steps to how to program such rules in on the maybe the open source the Linux no any changes um, just uh, change some um, green green which I marked in green the command the first command like here is directing the specified IP packet to Q0 in VS, VF0 and the second rule here is used to direct uh, um, packet to um, Q1 in PF. Why it is PF? Because uh, you, 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 can, you can see that there is three, the number is three. It's much higher, it's higher than um, the VF actual numbers. So if the uh, number is higher than the number of VFs, it indicates it's a PF. So I did a simple uh, performance measurement based on our uh, my um, servers. I'm using Hashwell and using Intel XL710 40 gate uh, NIX. And I, I, con I constructed two flow type. One flow is uh, contains the IP address. I want to direct it to kernel branch. And another one is uh, uh, I, I want it to go to DVDK layer 2 forward. So here is the uh, performance number. 
uh, you know that typically control plan and the rate the rate of the control plan packet is much less than the uh, pack, uh, data plan. So that's why I add the flow one is uh, um, occupied the minor percentage of this profile. So you can see that the uh, the duplicate layer two forward performance is keep stable and high. It will not be attacked by the radio of the flow one changes. So, so this uh, that the summary is like that. This things has some advantages like it support control interface and such like easier to control on PF and uh, um, flow uh, split on hardware. So no any offload on DBDK workload. So DBDK's application performance can keep stable and high. Uh, the, and no need any um, DBDK change and, or any uh, out of three kernels modules is required. And uh, the kernel, and the only need to change the kernel driver. And the driver is already open sourced and it is in the mainstream. So, it is already in the mainstream. You can download and just try. And uh, I think it is uh, uh, um, a, a safety solution because the security is already protected by SRV and IOMU. So the disadvantage is also um, obvious is that it depends on the hardware's cap um, classification's capability. And it is uh, not uh, um, Absolute, absolute Q sleep. Yeah, mm, that's all. So, any questions? Okay, thank you.